Alright, let's get one thing straight right out of the gate. This is important. We are about to wade into the murky, ethically questionable waters of phone monitoring. Before we go any further, stop and think. Accessing someone's private information without their explicit enthusiastic consent is not just rude, it's a profound invasion of privacy. It's like reading someone's diary but a diary that also knows where they've been, who they've talked to and what their bank balance is. It's a diary on steroids, you should not be reading it. In many places around the world this is spectacularly illegal. We're talking real consequences, fines that could make your wallet weep and even jail time. The law takes a dim view of people playing digital private eye on friends family partners. We're exploring the how for education, because understanding tech helps you protect yourself. This is not an endorsement. Think of this as a know your enemy briefing. The enemy, potential snoops and your own worst, suspicious impulses. The damage isn't just legal, it's personal. Trust, once shattered, doesn't glue back together. It becomes lumpy, misshapen, never the same. Imagine finding out someone you care about has been secretly scrolling your digital life. The sense of violation, the feeling of betrayal that's a wound that festers. Remember, every digital action has real-world consequences. This isn't a video game. No reset button for a broken relationship or a criminal record. This guide arms you with knowledge, not a discount James Bond persona. Understand system vulnerabilities, protect your own privacy, help others protect theirs. Pull back the curtain on services like iCloud and Google not to exploit them but to secure them. Please, use this information responsibly. The power to be a good digital citizen is in your hands. Don't drop it. Now you might be thinking, who are these people secretly trying to monitor phones? And the answer, depressingly, is a wider range of people than you might think, all with their own justifications. The most common and arguably most understandable reason comes from parents. In a world where the internet can be a digital playground but also a digital minefield, parents are rightfully worried. They want to protect their kids from cyberbullying, online predators and all the other horrors lurking behind the screen. Their motive is protection, a desire to create a safe path for their children through the chaotic landscape of the modern web. Then you have employers. In the corporate world, some companies issue phones to their employees, and with those phones often comes a set of rules. Employers might monitor these devices to protect sensitive company data, ensure employees aren't wasting company time, or prevent corporate espionage. If you own an iPhone, you live in Apple's world. And in that world, iCloud is the sun around which everything orbits. It's the invisible digital thread that connects your devices. Your iPhone, your iPad, your MacBook automatically syncing your photos messages, contacts, notes. It's incredibly convenient, designed to make your life seamless. But that seamless convenience is also what makes it a potential gateway for monitoring. The key to this kingdom, the one ring to rule them all, is the user's Apple ID and password. Without those credentials, the gates to iCloud remain firmly shut. So, how does it work? When a user has iCloud backup enabled on their iPhone, the device periodically sends copies of its data to Apple's servers, iMessages, Photos, App Data Device Settings. Anyone with the correct Apple ID and password can then log into iCloud.com from any web browser and see a startling amount of that information. They don't need to install any sneaky software on the phone itself. They just need the login details. This is the so-called no-install method. It's not a hack, it's just using a feature as it was designed but for a purpose it was absolutely not intended for. However, there is a giant, wonderful roadblock designed to stop this exact kind of thing. Two-factor authentication, or 2FA. If you've ever tried to log into your Apple account on a new device and your phone buzzed with a six-digit code, you've used 2FA. This security feature means that even if someone steals your password, they still can't get in without also having physical access to one of your trusted devices to get that code. It is the single best defense you have against unauthorized access, and it's why anyone trying to snoop on an iPhone user is likely to hit a wall, and fast. Another key feature within iCloud is Find My. This is the tool designed to help you find your lost devices. It shows you a map with the real-time location of your iPhone, iPad, or Mac. Again, this is incredibly useful when you've left your phone in a taxi, but it can also be misused by someone who has your login credentials to track your movements. But here too, security features are in place. For instance, if someone tries to log into your iCloud account from an unrecognized browser, Apple will often send an email notification to the account holder, letting them know about this suspicious activity. For the millions of people using Android phones, the digital mothership isn't iCloud, 
it's their Google account. Just like with Apple, a Google account is the central hub that syncs and stores a massive amount of personal data. Everything from your emails in Gmail, your photos in Google Photos, your browsing history in Chrome, your location history in Google Maps is tied to that single account. This creates an incredibly detailed digital footprint of your life, all conveniently stored in one place. And, just like with iCloud, if someone gets your Google username and password, they can access that footprint. The method for monitoring is functionally the same. No app installation is required. A person with the login credentials can simply sign into the Google account on any web browser and start exploring. They can open Google Photos and see every picture you've backed up. They can look at your Google Maps timeline and see a detailed history of where you've been, right down to the routes you took and the times you were there, provided of course that you have location history enabled. It's a powerful and frankly terrifying amount of data to have consolidated in one dashboard. Naturally, Google has its own version of a digital bodyguard, two-step verification. This is Google's equivalent of Apple's two-factor authentication and it works in a similar way. When you try to log in from a new device, Google will send a prompt or a code to your phone asking you to confirm that it's really you. This is an absolutely critical security layer. Without being able to approve that prompt, a would-be snooper with your password is still locked out. Google is also very aggressive about sending security alerts. If you search online for how to monitor a phone, you will be immediately bombarded with websites and ads that make fantastical promises. They'll claim you can hack any phone with just the number, or access someone's WhatsApp messages with a single click, or install a spy app remotely without ever touching the device. These sites often feature slick designs, glowing testimonials, and a sense of professional legitimacy. But let me be perfectly clear, almost all of them are scams. They are digital traps set for the desperate, the suspicious, and the technologically naive. These scams operate on a simple premise. They prey on your desire for an easy solution to a difficult problem. They tell you what you want to hear, that a magical secret tool exists that can bypass all security measures. One common trick is to ask you for a fee to unlock their monitoring service. You pay the money, and in return, you get access to a fake dashboard with, honestly just, nonsensical generic data or more likely you get absolutely nothing at all. They take your money and disappear, leaving you with nothing but a lighter wallet and a sense of foolishness. An even more dangerous type of scam tries to get you to download their special software or fill out a survey to verify your identity. The software you download is almost always malware, viruses, spyware or ransomware designed to infect your own computer or phone. Instead of monitoring someone else, you end up being the one who gets hacked. They can steal your banking information, your passwords, and your personal files. The survey is a phishing attempt designed to trick you into giving up your own sensitive information, which can then be used for identity theft. The hard truth is that there is no magic bullet. Companies like Apple and Google spend billions of dollars and employ some of the smartest engineers on the planet to secure their devices. The idea that some random website run by anonymous scammers has found a secret backdoor is, frankly, absurd. Legitimate monitoring requires credentials and navigating security features like two-factor authentication. Any service that promises to bypass these things is lying to you. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Don't let your curiosity or suspicion lead you into becoming a victim yourself. Let's zoom out for a moment talk about the bigger picture. This isn't just about technology, it's about principles. Privacy is a fundamental human right. In our digital age, our phones have become extensions of our minds and our lives. Private conversations, personal photos, secret thoughts typed into a search bar at 3 in the morning. Violating that space by accessing someone's phone without their consent is a profound act of disrespect. So after all this talk of iCloud, Google accounts, and digital traps, what is the real secret way to know what's going on in someone's life? It's not a piece of technology, it's not a clever hack, it is, and I know this sounds ridiculously simple, talking just talking to them. It's a revolutionary technology that has been in beta testing for thousands of years, and, honestly, it works. If you are a parent worried about your child's online activities, the best tool you have is not spyware. It's an open dialogue. Create a space where your child feels safe talking to you about what they see online. Educate them about the dangers but also listen to their experiences. Building trust and teaching them critical thinking skills will protect them far more effectively in the long run than secretly reading their messages ever will. Your goal should be to raise a digitally savvy citizen who knows how to navigate the internet safely on their own. 
not to create a prisoner in a digital panopticon you control. Use technology as a tool for connection, not control. Agree on rules together. Talk about what's appropriate and what isn't. Be a guide, not a warden. In the end, technology should be a force that brings us together, not one that drives us apart. Use features like location sharing with consent and for mutual benefit coordinating plans ensuring a loved one gets home safe. Be an informed digital citizen. Secure your own devices with strong, unique passwords and enable two-factor or two-step authentication on all your important accounts. Let's use our knowledge not to violate boundaries but to build stronger, more trusting relationships in a world that honestly desperately needs them.